All right, so the time has finally come here to start putting some gauges into the dashboard of the Speedster, which I'm, I'm really excited about because I know this is going to completely transform the look of the, the cockpit of the car here. So you can see I have a pretty nice assortment here of, of smaller gauges like oil pressure and water temperature and things like that that I've been collecting over the past couple years whenever I come across one at a junkyard or, some, or wherever that I think looks kind of cool. I'll pick it up and put it in my box of gauges and I've been waiting to drill any holes in the dashboard before I have you know a mostly complete set of what I want because I want to have everything where I want it and now I'm finally ready to do that because I've recently picked up these two beauties right here um, one of the few things I wanted for ever since I started the project of building this car was I wanted Marshall headlights which I have and I wanted Jaeger dash instruments um, just like the early Bugatti speedsters and a lot of other early um, high-end European race cars had back in the day. So this is a clock right here just like you would see in the dashboard of one of those vehicles and it's in excellent condition on the outside. Um, I was told it was in working condition. I I'll wind it up a little bit and if I shake it, it I can hear it like trying to tick but it's not quite there but that's fine. Um, it still looks beautiful. I might try to take it apart at some point. Uh, to, to see if I need to oil it or something like that. But the speedometer here, this is also either Jaeger or just like Jaeger copy because it looks essentially the same out of a Delage as you can see here. And this one actually is in phenomenal working condition on the inside. So let me show you that here. So this is in great working condition on the inside. There's just one, one slight caveat to that, which is that the needle moves the wrong way. And no, I'm not spinning it backwards. Um, the, this, the mechanism on the inside doesn't actually work if you spin it the wrong way. So that is the way it's meant to be spun. So all that means is the, the face that's in here, this Delage face, is not the original one that came with this thing. Um, I've seen a lot of these where it has zero kilometers or zero miles per hour up here, and then the needle moves clockwise in this direction. So that's probably what this was meant to have with it. Not a big deal. I've seen those sold or I can try to make a face for this eventually if I want to at some point. But all in all, this is a beautiful piece that I'm excited to, to drill a hole and put it in the dashboard. And I can also mount now this beautiful ignition switch here that I have. And this was sent to me a while ago by um, Aaron Loveless from Loveless Performance. Um, he remanufactures these beautiful switches here and he reached out to me uh, like I said, quite a while ago, asking if I wanted to put one of these in the Speedster. So, of course, I said yes, because this is just a beautiful piece here. The aluminum will match match the rest of the car really nicely. Um, so, yeah, check them out. I'll put a link to this stuff in the description again, if you want to see that. So, what I did here was I just took pictures of all the instruments that I wanted to use and, you know, just printed it out. And I just had these taped on, laid out pretty much where I want them. And you can see now really what that's going to look like. Um, so obviously I got my speedometer up here, put a um, placeholder um, tack right there. Um, so if anyone has a Jaeger tack that looks like this, let me know, because um, that's the one last big piece I'm looking for. But all in all, I think that's pretty good. So I'll have, I'll have the speedometer, the tack, ignition over there. I'll have oil pressure, water temperature, and an ammeter clock over there. If I'll have another couple switches eventually for you know turn signals and things like that. But that's a pretty good basic layout that I think I'm happy with. So I'm gonna use that as my layout. I'll measure where the, those things are and start drilling some holes. So once I center punched the location for each of the gauges, I took the dashboard over to the milling machine here and I started out with some hole saws just like this one here. And this is just to remove the bulk of the material and then after that's finished, I switched over to the boring head to take off the rest of the material and get the hole to the final size. And that's much nicer because it leaves a nice clean finish and it's very, very precisely controlled to the diameter that I want to put it at.
So once I finished machining all the holes in there, I took a little bit of time here to just clean up the outside edges of the, the dashboard here. I cut this part a long time ago and there are still um, a lot of like saw marks and uneven edges here that I hadn't put the time in back then. So pretty much just using the bandsaw here and the orbital sander a little bit to just clean up any of the saw marks and rough edges and try to make that make sure that the dashboard here um, fits pretty uniformly to the body of the car as well. All right, so now I'm at the point here where I've got um, all the holes and everything for my instruments machined into the dashboard here. Um, of course, the only big one that's still missing is a tachometer to go right there, but I left the space for it, so I'll machine that back in once I have it. But now it's time for the fun part, which is um, jeweling or engine turning the surface of the dashboard to look like this here. And this is just, of course, purely decorative, but um, this is gonna completely transform the whole look of it. What I'm using for this is um, these little cylindrical pieces of, it's like a rubberized abrasive, so it's, hard rubber but it's got abrasive compound um, spread out through it. It's supposed to be equivalent to 120 grit and I just bought this off of McMaster. I got a couple of them here. So I've been doing a bunch of test pieces and sometimes it turned out nicely. Sometimes it kind of like would almost gall up and like dig in on certain rings and give give weird uneven patterns which I didn't really like. But I did a number of different tests and eventually I got it to turn out with these like beautiful, nice, consistent, sharp edged circles there. And you can see I figured out my spacing here. So the diameter of these circles is um, 7 eighths of an inch. And I have them spaced 5 eighths of an inch apart. And then these rows are also 5 eighths of an inch apart. And of course each row is staggered back and forth so that they overlap um, nicely, kind of like shingles on a roof. So I'm gonna do the whole layout first here, put lines like this all over the dashboard to, for, for guidance, and then we'll start to, start to add these in. I started the layout here by first marking these horizontal lines across the whole width of the dashboard, and then on each of those, I marked the center locations um, for each one of these little um, burnishings that I'm gonna be putting onto the dashboard here. And that alone wasn't enough to really give me a reliable sense of uh, accuracy of where I'm placing each one of these because as that little piece of like rubber gets down close to the surface I can't actually see that single center mark. So I got this socket here and I'm using that to you know sort of mark the the perimeter of each one of these little these little markings and that will make it much easier to know where to put each one because I can always see that that outside arc even if it's not the whole circle that's visible. And here you can kind of see in real time what it's like to, to do the engine turning here. And these are the very first ones I was doing, so I was going very slow with it uh, and taking my time. Later on, once I got the hang of it, I was doing each mark in just you know one single pass. Um, but I was taking my time here at the beginning, and you can see how those, those circular marks really help out to, to get the alignment right. Thank you. 
And this here now is what it looks like once I've sort of gotten the hang of it. And you can see I'm making each pass in just one single motion, you know, applying brief but firm pressure to it. And you can see each one of these little markings comes out nice and clean, nice crisp edges, and very uniform um, in terms of the finish across it. And this was a, a very, very fun process too. Of course it took a while, but it was, it was kind of nice with like the, the repetitiveness of it and seeing this seeing this come out as nicely as it is. So I'm not sure how well this really translates to the video, but this is just absolutely gorgeous here. I could not be happier with how this turned out. Um, that little like rubberized abrasive um, thing was the perfect tool for this. Like every little turning is very nice and uniform with super crisp edges and boy you can just see how nicely the light dances off of that. Okay, well here is that dashboard now mounted into the car and this really just completely transforms the look of the whole vehicle here. I mean, this, this looks like a piece of jewelry, <laughs> which is exactly the look I was going for. So, of course I've got my speedometer up there, ignition switch over there on the left. In here I've got oil pressure, water temperature, and an ammeter. And then of course over here got my clock right there too. So super happy with how this turned out. I'll see how close I can get in here, how close the camera will focus, but like every one of these little like jeweled turnings is so crisp and even. There are a number of different ways you can look at other YouTube videos of people trying to accomplish the same thing, but I don't think anything gets even remotely close to using those little rubberized abrasive things in terms of just the consistency and quality of the finish you get. That is 100% the way to do it. I'll throw a couple links down in the description of those things I use too, just in case anyone is, is curious and wants to replicate that same thing. So all in all, yeah, that, that really transforms the look of the whole car too, especially when you're, well, of course, when you're viewing it from back here too. And yes, of course, I'll have to do the same thing to the firewall at some point and maybe even the, the um, little windshield frames here too. And probably anything else I can, I can do that too, I will end up doing it. So thanks for watching as usual, and I'll see you next time.